Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and I'm working on a little series of ways, simple ways, to color fabric to use in other projects. Today I'm going to just use a homemade stencil. I'm using Jacquard Textile Color in Emerald Green. I have a little paper towel. One's damp for my hands and one's dry, and I'll show you what that's for. I'm using a little dabber or dauber. And you could use a stencil brush, try, try different things. I have used my finger even in the past. I have a little container with just enough water to sink this dabber, dauber into. I have a little spray bottle. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that for this video. So I also have my paper, um, sorry, I have my fabric attached to some freezer paper. So just to stabilize it. Again, not necessarily um, necessary. You could tape the fabric down or you could try and do it without. I like a lot of stuff going on with the fabric so I'm not really concerned if things don't look perfect. And instead of putting my paint on a palette I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, lid to the paint. Um, my fabric is dry. A lot of times you know I use damp fabric. I'm going to keep it dry for this at least the beginning of this technique and I'm going to put my little whatever tool I'm using to by the paint. I want to take some of that off. With paper I would take more off, but with fabric, um, because it sort of drinks it up, I won't take as much off. And some of the leaves might be lighter and darker. I'm okay with all of that. That's all good to me. The fabric, because the fabric is dry, this is going to stay pretty put. I'll show you what happens if the fabric's not dry, but for now I'm just going to do it with dry fabric. I'm just going to go in my stencil. This is a homemade stencil. I cut it out just using an X-Acto knife. A lot of times, uh, if you've watched any of my other uh, videos about stenciling, I use my sewing machine a lot of times with just a needle to um, cut out my stencils. It's kind of a fun technique. You can certainly use store purchased stencils or other maker's stencils. I just, when I'm doing a project, I like it to be stuff that I've made. So you can see some are heavy on the paint, some are lighter on the paint. For this technique, it doesn't matter. It's all up to the maker. And it's pretty, a pretty quick. I'm just doing a little sample, of course, so uh, it's going to be very quick, but even if you're doing a bigger piece, you just get yourself all set up and just go for it, and it can be pretty, pretty quick project. And you could, if you really cared, you can make the leaves part dark and part light. That might be easier, more easily done with a stencil brush where your hand's a little higher up and you can see better what you're doing. Okay. hit a little bit harder. It might have shifted a little bit. Again, that's no big deal on here. It'll be just fine. Now I'm going to lift this off. And I could do more of that, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to do it right, do that part right there. Now I'm going to take my little container with the water in it. Ooh, that's really glary. Let's see if it's better over here. A little bit better. And I'm going to take my dauber. I'm going to let that, let that just sort of set up there. I'm making the water colored like the leaves. And now, there's two ways you can do this. You can spritz this. These may move a little, but not much probably, because at this point they're pretty dry to the touch. But I'm going to leave it dry, and if you, if you leave it dry, you can watch what happens. I'm going to color this entire paper green, so I'm making a tone on tone more or less. It's a little lighter tone, obviously. And if I put this color on, those may stay circles when I add more water, colored water. Shows a little ring. You can get a lot of different neat effects. Or you can just keep going with the straight across if you don't want to uh, have another design underneath there. But I love, I love that that's happening. And so you can see, if I rub really hard on the ones that have heavier paint, you can see that it's, it's moving the paint. And it's all good as far as I'm concerned. Now I'll show you, I will show you one other, um, so my paint, my fabric is all wet. And I'll see if I can, I have a dry piece to show you, but I'll, I'm going to try this 
see if I can get, mm, let me open my paint back up for a second. I'm going to show you what happens. My dauber is pretty wet, but this is, so now I'm working on wet, wet uh, fabric. And if I, that's probably way too much paint, but so I'm working on wet fabric as opposed to when I started with the dry fabric and it blooms a little, it bleeds out a little bit. It makes it softer. That's a good technique. If you want, you can start with the whole fabric wet and just get it to, to do that mushing kind of, and I'll show you on this piece that's done. You can probably tell by looking at this now that you've learned how to do that, that some of these were done, of course, on dry fabric, the ones that have a really distinct, strong outline and design. And then these were done on the fabric that was wet and see if they get soft and mush. In any case, you have fabric tone on tone fabric and it's great for use in other projects. So this was just one short way and in the series I'll have more coming up to show you some different ways to color fabric to use in all kinds of different art projects. So I hope you like this project and you'll give it a try and if you do, I'd love to hear about it. Until next time, this has been Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.